Hub. So basically today I just want to show you an updated skincare routine. Um, I'll show you pictures of how I used to have a problem and my biggest problem was post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. My skin type is combination towards dry and eczema prone, um, more combination in summer and more dry and eczema prone in winter. So my biggest issue was that I would just get pimples just left, right and center. And it wasn't like cystic big pimples, just like small pimples and all of them, all of them would leave a mark. So post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is something that, that I had to target in my skincare routine. So it's more of a maintenance type routine that I can do every day or at least once a week. I don't, you know, vigorously go in as I used to. Um, now it's just like maintenance. Now it's just like polishing up. The first thing that I do and the first thing I do is wash my face and basically um, let me quickly show you what I use to wash my face. So I am still a Cetaphil um, Gentle Cleanser Stan, especially when you don't really have like a lot of problems like you've, deal you've dealt with like um, breakouts and you no longer, you just want something that won't break your skin out, something that's mild and gentle. And this is what I use. It's non-drying. It won't make your skin react to anything. But also, if you're someone with acne, this won't do much for you. So you have to, you know, use um, something like an active, maybe a salicylic acid cleanser or a glycolic acid cleanser, something that has an active ingredient to target your acne. This you can use maybe on resting days if you're someone with like a lot of acne, but this mainly won't do anything. It's just something to not irritate your skin and therefore not cause further inflammation so yeah let me quickly wash my face so the first thing to do always is to wash your hands before you do anything because the germs on your hands can get transferred on your face and basically bacteria can accumulate and result in you getting acne or further you know drive that whole chain of you having acne so let me just quickly wash my hands let me dry them Okay, then I'll just start with a cleanser. Okay, let it on the right. Actually, so you don't need a lot. So I literally, what happened? So I'll just usually something this small. This cleanser is like the consistency. It's not gel. It's almost gel-like, but I like a watery gel. Um, you don't need a lot. So technically, according to what's it, LA beautyologists, a lot of like dermatologists say you should, um, I hate it when this happens, you should um, cleanse your skin for like 60 seconds to make sure that all the pores are cleansed. So yeah, you're also meant to go through the decolletage area. That's why I just prefer cleansing my face in the shower because like you're able to get in touch of like the dirty parts behind your ears, down your neck. Now I'm already dressed, like I am not gonna do that. So yeah, 60 seconds. I also go around my eyes. So if it's an active cleanser, you can't really go over your eyes like I did here. But this one is literally good glycerine, like it's not gonna do anything. So yeah, this was my problem side. I think I sleep on this side primarily. So when I bumped up my routine of like changing my pillowcases often, at least once a week, or like twice, no, at least twice a week, um, using satin pillowcases, then at least, you know, um, the hyperpigmentation and actually the breakouts got better. So when you, the whole like mathematics with it, with hyperpigmentation, is number one, stopping the breakouts, because you can't deal with hyperpigmentation while you're still breaking out. It's just, it's just like pouring water into a bucket with a hole at the bottom and that you're not you're not gonna get anywhere. So it's so much better if you like target um the breakouts initially. Some people go on Accutane, some people go on oral contraceptives, some people will be on antibiotics, other people will be using active like cleansers, products with salicylic acids, products with retinol to try to target the, the breakouts initially. And once you, you literally stop breaking out then you can dive into dealing with the hyperpigmentation. Okay. So let me quickly wash my face. It's also like it does nothing guys, like literally, this is when your skin is gold and has reached like its, its best, not best, but it's like on its way and all you're doing is just maintaining. Okay, I think that's about 60 seconds. Um, ooh. Okay, so 
so I don't like having to dry my face. I prefer having it air dry or like using a cotton pad with um with thing you're already on it with with that toner. Let me just let it air dry. Well, it pretty much takes a long time, but personally, I have a really bad experience with using Ivaslap or guys Yoha. Like what I've seen with like Ivaslap or like face cloths, whatever you want to call them, um, is that they accumulate bacteria and basically it further dries the chain of acne. So what I've um, decided to do personally is to just, you know, I have decided to let my face air dry or if I'm just going to use a toner, I'll just like tone on top with a cotton pad if I want to. The toner I'm using, I told you guys that I'm using like mild things. When your skin has stopped breaking out, the priority is to use things that won't aggravate your skin and cause your skin to flare up. So basically, um, I remember I made a video where I was unboxing stuff from Skin Functional and Standard Beauty. And I also, I bought this, um, this cucumber. I'll put up a picture of it. I bought this cucumber toner. So it's a hydrating toner and it's very good actually. I've been using it for the past like couple of months. I think it's actually, <laughs> it's actually been like four or five months. Um, I still have it because I alternate between toners. Like I'll use a glycolic acid toner, I'll use a salicylic acid toner, then I'll use this toner so that my skin doesn't get used to, um, doesn't get used to nothing basically. So this toner is a toner that I can use every day, every morning. It's nice in my mind. It's good for people with sensitive skin because I know some people with sensitive skin can't use toners because they just cause them to get flare ups. So this one is nice. It has it's nice for dry and sensitive skin also. Standard beauty, hello. And cucumber toner. Let's get to it. So basically, my mainstay, um, what's it, serums that I have been using, um, outside of the nice in mind um, one, which also assists excellently when it comes to hyperpigmentation ones that have assisted me greatly when it comes to um when it comes to hyperpigmentation has been this antioxidant complex firmer i use it i at first i didn't like it but i'm starting to like it i think there's specific it's from skin functional so i think there's specific um the specific moisturizers that don't go with this and the standard beauty one that I figured out actually is the only one that works with this one made me start using this more. So vitamin C is very good and it's bright, it's a brightening agent. It's it assists greatly when it comes to hyperpigmentation and this is an ascorbic acid and in three percent ferulic acid from skin functional. I've also been using that dark mark management two percent alpha abutin um serum. Basically both are from skin functional. So yeah, I've been alternating between the two, um, but my mainstay has always been that ordinary one. So I, I think tonight I'll use, let me use the Alpha Abutin. I actually love this one. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's almost finished. Like, I didn't think that I would take um, liking and appreciate the Alpha Abutin, but it really worked for my skin. So basically, you can't have you can't let the pipette touch your skin. Some people don't like to drop it. I prefer dropping it, even though I don't allow it to touch my skin. Um, I don't know. I just I just prefer dropping it. I think that was a lot. I think you only you only need like three drops. I do six. stuff that won't break you out this routine is like basic stuff that won't break you out minimal activity good for hyperpigmentation that's the this is what this routine is about simple basic maintenance skincare routine so let's get to the next step so the moisturizer <laughs> it's virtually almost finished i remember when i made this whole video i made a video on um products from skin functional and standard beauty and that's what that was when i was initially introduced to their products i decided to try them out i saw that they have you know clean beauty blah 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 non-irritating formulas so i decided to try them out 
and this one in particular let me show you i was impressed with the packaging and everything and i'm also impressed that it didn't break i have carried it places it's been at the bottom of my bag it's been literally everywhere and it never broke never lost the lid lid securely fits on you don't lose the lid um the lid doesn't break it's good plastic so anyways there this this moisturizer is called a moisture balm i used it a lot especially in summer um because this this is minimal it's like silky luxurious feel it's ultra like lightweight it won't make you shiny or glossy or whatever i don't know how it would make like someone with oily oily skin feel like but personally for me it was perfect like i, I don't want something that's matte and like annoyingly drying so this was particularly perfect for me in summer hence why i use all of it i did not like the smell initially but <laughs> but i eventually got used this moisturizer is particularly good it has um squalene it has cucumber extracts which are anti-inflammatories and have anti-inflammatory properties so basically this goes the one so yeah i think i think i'm definitely gonna buy this one again i don't know i was worried that i was gonna react to it because it's not bad as if it had stuff in it that was bad but i don't know what specifically has that strong smell maybe it's this silky pensia powder Ugh. silky pensia powder I don't know. I'll look it up. Still keep it sheer powder. But yeah, I never reacted to it. It's good. I use a lot of it. I love it. I, I don't have any complaints. No complaints at all. And it was cheap. It was like 150 or something. Or 170 at most. Ah, but it still has... <laughs> I asked my... It still has that smell. So basically that would be my nighttime routine. I've been using recently like I don't want anything that's gonna irritate my skin I love what it is now so um, there's no need for me to do the most in, in terms of like actives I use a retinol like once a week or like that glycolic acetone uh, maybe twice a week or once a week like I don't use actives as much um, so the goal right now is literally just brightening um, preventing further inflammation um, the goal also is to just also prevent further breakouts so that is where I am with my skin right now. It's been a journey I've been trying and um, all of this basically is trial and error. Like you don't know how your skin is going to react to anything. Um, so you have to try something, especially, you know, there's research with regard to ingredients that will, will work for your skin type. So once you figure out your skin type, sort of use that as a guide when it comes to picking products. Um, that are going to work for your skin and if you are interested in any of my skincare videos like acne type videos I even have a playlist on skincare but I'll try to drop more videos like similar to this or like things to avoid when it comes to having your own skincare routine so yeah um, I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions make sure you just drop them in that comment section below um, if you like more skincare videos, let it go know so that I can continue making them um, and basically, you know, continue focusing on more skincare related type of videos or content. I'll try to drop one every like month um, just so as to keep everyone up to date and educated when it comes to things of skincare. So yeah, um, I will catch you on my next video. Make sure you like, you comment, subscribe, you share. Okay.